What's happening, sports fans? How you doing? I am Kendrick, the sports guy. Good Monday to you, and it is not a good Monday for the Dallas Cowboys or their fans. After that ugly beatdown that they took at AT&T Stadium at the hands of the Lions 47-9, we're going to go over the numbers in this game and just give my thoughts on this, where this team is at this point. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that follow button. Again, the Lions put up 47 points on the Cowboys and got the victory 47 to 9 to move the Lions to 4 and 1, drop the Cowboys to 500 at 3 and 3. Now, let's go over some of the numbers from this this game, shall we? Yes, we shall. The Lions, they rushed for 184 yards, Cowboys only 53. That run game is still going nowhere even after Ezekiel Elliott reports came out that he was upset about not getting enough touches. Well, he got eight yesterday and only had 17 yards. So, you get what you pay for, in my opinion. Cowboys wanted to go cheap rather than go after Derrick Henry. They decided to, to, to bring a retread back. Uh, turnovers. Lions had zero, Cowboys had five. You're not going to win your game when you turn the ball over five times. Now, the red zone opportunities. Cowboys had three of them. The Lions had five of them. Lions scored in three of their red zone opportunities. Cowboys didn't score one time in the red zone. Red zone is, is once you get into your opponent's 20-yard line. You want to get touchdowns. Again, Ezekiel Elliott, that, oh, that Cowboys O-line, uh, led by Zach Martin. It is a shell of itself. This The O-line used to be, in my opinion, one of the strengths of this team for the last 10 years. And it's, it's not good at all. They gave up four sacks. Again, they were only able to rush for 53 yards. Dak Prescott, he didn't play well, uh, but he played, you know, considering that offensive line and no run game, uh, he, <laughs> he, I think he did as best as he could. He was 17 to 33, 178 yards, zero TDs, two interceptions. CeeDee Lamb had seven receptions for 89 yards. Now, the Cowboys, this is their fourth consecutive loss at home after winning 16 in a row at home so they are in a funk at home no pun intended they are in a funk that yesterday's loss that was the worst loss at home since 1988 now the 167 points allowed at home by the dallas cowboys are the third most in nfl history and the cowboys have lost their first three games at home for the first time since 2010 uh, they have been outscored in those losses by 66 points so again you know they've lost to the saints they've lost to the ravens and now to the lions at home and it doesn't get any easier for this team they actually have a bye coming up but after the bye they go to san fran they face the niners on october 27th that's a sunday night game and we know the cowboys the niners have had their number the last couple of years then they go to the Falcons, who are actually playing some pretty good football. Then they host the Eagles. Then they host the Texans on that Monday night game. That's November the 18th. Texans is the best team in Texas. I said it. Yep, they are. They are five and one. So that's gonna be a big game, regardless of what the what these teams' records are at that point. That's November 18th. Then on November 24th, they are at the Washington Commanders, who, by the way, in my opinion, is the best team in this, this uh, division right now. But who's to say, 11-24, that's a couple of weeks away. We don't, we'll, we'll see. They did play the Ravens tough on Sunday and lost, I think, by seven points. And then they host the Giants on Thanksgiving. So again, it doesn't get any easier for this Dallas Cowboys team. Uh, Jerry Jones would say that Mike McCarthy, is, 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 is he's not letting him go. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna fire him right now. And I get it. Mike McCarthy's in the last year of his deal. What would firing Mike McCarthy do right now to help this team? Wouldn't make sense to me either. Let him go ahead and coach this thing out, uh, as far as I know. Then, you know, they got the injuries. They were missing a lot of players yesterday, especially on the defensive side. Michael Parsons was out. Eric Kendricks was out. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence is out for at least six to eight weeks. Deron Bland didn't play yesterday. So they was missing a lot of pieces on defense, and it showed uh, offensively this team, they don't have identity. They can't run the footballs. So all they can do is pass. This is a pass-first offense. But they don't have the weapons. Outside of C.D. Lamb, teams know that's, that's the go-to guy, so they can roll their coverage his way. 
Uh, Brandon Cooks is out for a few weeks. He's out the next four games. Uh, Jalen Tolbert, he, he's shown flashes. Jake Ferguson, he's shown flashes at the tight end position. But outside that, they have no one else to scare them. And then, you know, the owner says that they're not interested in Devontae Adams. Why wouldn't you be? Somehow make that, that contract work. Y'all negotiate. Bring in another weapon on the offensive side of the ball because, quite, quite frankly, this team is not good. They're not a, they can't run the football, so they got to throw it. So you need to give your quarterback as many weapons as you possibly can if you're going to be a throwing, uh, a passing team. Uh, again, defensively, Mike Zimmer got to figure it out, man. These, you know, these guys, uh, they were, they were, they were, they tackled okay, but they were, they were getting kind of manhandled by the Lions, they, especially in the middle. The the Cowboys' uh, defense, the, their front line, especially the defensive tackle position, Mizey Smith, I, he's played better this last last couple of games, but he's kind of been a disappointment. They, they first round pick from last year. They're soft up the middle. Teams can run the football right up the gut on this Dallas Cowboys defense. That's something they got to fix, especially, you know, with these teams they got coming up, with the Niners, uh, uh, and then the uh, the Eagles, and then the Texans who run the football really well, and the Commanders. They got a really nice run game too. So I, this team is 3-3. Three and three. They – they were a game behind, believe it or not, the Washington Commanders. Uh, this NFC East division is kind of topsy turvy anyway. But at this point, I had, I have to say honestly, I hadn't seen this team get beat down this badly in a while. Even, even when the Packers uh, came in and put 48 on, up, up on them in that playoff game, the Cowboys still put up 32 points. Uh, so. I, I, what, what's next? These guys got to get it out. They, they got this by to, to figure this thing out, get some bodies healthy. But they're three and three, and if, if, if these next six games, this team could be looking at being <laughs> possibly three and nine. Well, I think they'll beat the Giants. I think they'll beat them, and they and you know these rivalry games are a little bit different. And and, and I don't know. This team could eventually end up being eight and nine when it's all said. It's all said and done. And uh, and what a way to spend your 82nd born day, Jerry. And by the way, Jerry did say this, and I'm quoting what he told ESPN. He said, generally speaking, I think my message is, I know you don't need to hear me say this, but I'm well aware that we're in the proverbial S-H-I-T right now. Yeah, Jerry, you pretty much right. Y'all are in the proverbial S-H-I-T, in my opinion like to know what you think about these Cowboys. What can they do to get to get this thing fixed? Talk to me in the comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Click that follow button. I'm Kendrick the Sports Guy. We will see you on the other side. And on the next report, I am out. Peace.